Let's begin this set of four readings. These four readings are based on this topic called linear regression. Another word for this topic is what we call econometrics. Okay. So in this set of readings, what we are trying to do is we are trying to find the impact of, let's say, one variable. Let's call it variable X on another variable. Let's call that variable Y. Okay. This relationship between X and Y, we'll be trying to to capture this relationship via what we call a linear model. Okay, A linear model between x and y, I'll just quickly tell you like a very simple equation that you must have come across in your high school. And this equation is what captures this linear relationship between x and y. And this equation looks something like this. It's y is equal to beta naught a constant plus some number beta 1 times this variable x okay so this is what we call a linear model what i'll try and do is before i get into the math and the nitty gritties of what regression is all about let me give you like an example okay and we'll be sort of referring to this example time and again whenever we need to draw on some intuition okay so let's assume that this y is let's say the height of a kid in a school for example okay now in a given class let's say i have captured the data of the heights of all students in the class let's call this data yi okay so i denotes the subscript and i would let's say run from one all the way till n okay and i am assuming here that the entire class that i have chosen is my population okay so yi, let yi denote the height of the ith student, right? Where i is, let's say, a numeric index that I have assigned to every student in the class. So yi is the height of a student. And let's say the job which I have at hand is this job of trying to explain what causes variation in heights of students in any given class, okay? So there are many factors which you can intuitively think of which can cause this variation in height. Well, there is exists some variation because heights of all students in a class are not the same. That means there is some sort of variation, right? The most important or the most sort of intuitive factor that would come to your mind which can explain the height of various students like why is ith or why is the first student tall? Why is the second student average height? Why is the third student short? The, the factor which would come to your mind is the height of, let's say, one of the parents. So let's pick, let's say, the height of the father, right? So let X denote the height of the father. And again, I capture this data, which is XI, which corresponds to the height of the father of the ith student, right? So in terms of a pair of data, let's say I have captured this data as a pair. So xi, yi, where i runs from 1 to n. So in this model, what we are trying to capture or trying to assess is how much of the variation in the heights of various students in a class is explained by the heights of their respective fathers. Okay. So this is the job which I have at hand. Now, let's come back now to the math that we were dealing with. The math that we were dealing with was what about a linear model, right? Now, I had told you the linear model we are talking about is y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1x. Now, when you open any textbook on econometrics or let's say on regression, the first and foremost thing the textbook will teach you is that linearity in terms of how a model is specified can be of two types. Linear model can be a linear model in variables or it can be a linear model in parameters. Okay. Here in this equation, let's distinguish clearly as to what is a variable and what is a parameter. Why? and x are variables. When you change or move from one kid to another, the data pair xi, yi keeps changing. That's what we call a variable, okay? In this equation, beta naught and beta one are what we refer to as parameters. Parameters, think intuitively of parameters as something which yes, you are free to set whatever you want to set them as, but once they are set, 
they are fixed after that right so once a parameter has been set as any given value it then defines that particular model now when you go about and change the parameter you're talking about a different model altogether okay that's what we call parameters now out of these two which sort of linearity are we talking about now before i qualify on that statement let me tell you what linearity means linearity basically means that when i define an equation like this then i am disallowing any higher powers of whatever this equation is linear in if this equation is linear in variables it means that i will not have terms in this equation which are terms like x square x cube and so on okay if this equation is linear in parameters it means i would not have parameters which look like beta 1 square beta not cube and so on right so this is how i define linearity of any given model in this chapter or as far as our syllabus of for frm is concerned we would be focusing on this category of models and which is the category of linearity in parameters okay so what is the job that we now have at hand the job which we now have at hand is we have already collected the data right we have in front of us a tabulated data for let's say the height of the fathers and the height of all the students what we now want to do is to what we call fit this linear model onto this data right i'm not really sure if this model would really fit this context or not but we would still run this entire exercise and then figure out how well we've done okay so when i say fit the model then fitting the model essentially boils down to finding these two coefficients the coefficients of beta not and beta 1 once we have these coefficients what use are they right if we have these coefficients that means we have a working model the model would look like y is equal to beta not plus beta 1 x where beta not and beta 1 have been estimated right once you have this equation ready with you it can help you help you solve a lot of very a lot of practical questions the first practical question that it can help you solve is how much does the height of a student change on average if the height of the father the change in the height of the father is known to you that's one kind of question you can answer right so let's say if you have two students in front of you if you know the difference in the height of their fathers can you on an average guess the difference in the heights of the students right that's what we are trying to do in this mathematical construct it's like saying it's the average difference in heights let's say of two students given you know the difference in heights of their fathers that's one question you can answer the second question that you can answer if you have a model in front of you that is ready and working is if i have fitted this model based on a class of let's say 50 students and let's say tomorrow there's a new student who joins the class but who hasn't yet landed up in school right from the data of let's say this student if i give you let's say the height of this student's father right this equation on an average would help you find the expected height of the student without you having even met the student right so this is these are the two very practical questions which this linear model can address if we have successfully set these parameters or more let's say not successfully let's say accurately set these two parameters okay now let's now make things slightly more difficult when we talk about the effect of a father's height on a son or a daughter right we know that the father's height is not the only determinant in the kid's height right there are other factors as well factors like you know physical exercise factors like nutrition which can also play a role in the height of the student right those other factors we are not modeling in this equation yet because in this equation we have only one target variable which we are trying to explain the variation of or variation in and we only have one variable which we are using to explain that variation right and we have picked that one variable to be the height of the father 
So there are other variables which we know would have an impact, but we are not considering in this model, right? So what we do is we lump all those variables, which we call other factors into this catch all variable that we call U. Okay. So this U would include the effect of every other variable, which can affect the Y, but which is not being dealt with in this model. When you write down a model like this, then many a times when you read books on econometrics, you would see the same model written with a subscript I. That, that way of writing the model is basically stating or trying to tell you that this model has been written, let's say for every subject or every student in this population, right? So it's, it's written with a subscript I, which means that it's written for the ith pair xi, yi, right? So if ui is a catch-all, right, it will help you explain a lot of, you know, variation, right? Let's say you have two students who, whose fathers have the same height. So there are two students for whom X is the same, but still their, their heights are different. The students' heights are different, right? The only variable which can help you explain that difference is this UI. So it comes to your rescue basically, okay? So this is about why we need this variable, right? Now let's put some terms in front of us. Linear regression model is what we are trying to do here, right? It's a one variable model because only single X is being used to explain the variation in Y. When we move on to chapters, which are, you know, three and four of this set of four readings, we would include multiple variables. Okay. Let's understand a few names that we attach to Y and X. When we write down a linear regression model of this form, then Y is you know given the names which are either we call it a dependent variable or we can call it a, an explained variable because we are trying to explain the variation in y or in very very you know exotic terms we call it the regressend okay on the other hand look at x x is a variable which we call independent variable right y was dependent on x x is the independent variable x can also be referred to as an explanatory variable, right? Y's variation is being explained by X, which is an explanatory variable. And X is also referred to as a regressor, okay?